Hi everyone, it's Ruby here today, and today I am going to make my first Halloween costume. So I have been sewing wearable garments for about a year now. Uh, I think when I made my first dress, and I made an outfit when going on vacation in November of last year, but very much unaware of how garments were constructed or didn't really have as many capabilities for how to problem solve or understand how garments are made. So this year, considering that I have slightly more knowledge, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to make my first Halloween costume. I don't have a lot of time to make it, and so I hadn't really wanted to do this, but I figured that it would be a good starting point for what to look back on and how to improve for costumes in the future. So I had a couple of criteria for the kind of costume that I had wanted to make in order to make it realistic and some enjoyable in some way for me to make these costumes. It needed to be something that I was actually interested in. So something that interested me either was related to something I was interested in or was a character of something I watched or basically something that I could talk about. It also needed to be something that wasn't too niche. Niche Halloween costumes have a time and a place. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but uh, I don't want to have to pull up my phone every time I try to explain the costume to someone. So the more likely it is that someone will recognize it, the better. And third, it has to be something that I can rewear in some capacity. So not something that's just a one-off, but has elements of something that I either already own or something that I would rewear in some way. And these stipulations made it much more difficult for me to find a Halloween costume because there's a lot of great ideas out there, a lot of easy ideas, pop culture ideas that people would recognize, but that I'm not very interested in. So I went on TikTok and looked at a couple of different options that people were giving and came across one video where I went, that is exactly what I want to do. So I want to credit this creator who had suggested a teacher appropriate costume, which is one of the sewing mice in Cinderella. This costume didn't need to be teacher appropriate. I do teach some labs and things, but I'm unlikely to wear it in those labs. Uh, this is just something that I thought was really cute. And it followed the criteria, the criteria that I had for the kind of costume that I wanted to make because it has to do with sewing. So it was already something that I was interested in. And I also remembered watching Cinderella obsessively as a kid. So there's a little bit of just general interest involved in that too. It is also recognizable. It is not a key key character in the movies, but once you do specify, hey, I'm a sewing mouse from Disney, um, it's a lot easier for people to recognize. And thirdly, it is basically just a bunch of pieces together that create something that looks vaguely servant-like or peasant-like from the 1800s, and I have a couple of pieces like that already and I think I can cobble together the rest of it. So this basically meant that I have a few different pieces that I have to consider for this costume. So from what I can tell of the actual image, it is classic Disney his historical sort of garment where it doesn't really fit in any sort of time or place, and it even doesn't really reference a specific time and place. Like, it's kind of just vaguely you can sort of guess like peasant like because it does sort of match Cinderella's dress in some way. So I went with blue because I already had a blue skirt that could accommodate a petticoat and so it would be poofy enough and I could wear that and there was a mouse or a couple of mice that did wear blue skirts. On top of that it looks like the mice are wearing either something that is like a dress where it is a similar color as the skirt or they're wearing tops that are slightly different colors. And you can even sort of see that, or I would imagine that the person who is painting those mice were just dipping into different like hues or shades of that color because it 
looks like it's basically the same blue but slightly darker or slightly lighter so they have tops that are just basic tops with a sort of flared sleeve that goes down to the elbow and then some of them have either full aprons because the top is like white but only for the bodice and then they have a little apron skirt at the bottom and some of them just have the apron skirts there's also little bows on the tails and um hats that also seem very quintessentially Disney, which is, you know, little caps that almost look like they could be Dutch milkmaid caps or something because they have the flaps on the side. Um, and the male mice have versions of that without the flaps that just kind of look like toques or beanies, which also is very reminiscent of like the dwarves in Snow White or um, I think there's like a couple of other cartoons that looks like that but that they're all kind of vaguely the same so those were the main pieces so I already had the skirt and the petticoat so now I need to make the top the hat the apron a tail with a bow and then I would also like to do a prop to make sure that it shows that I'm a mouse and that I'm small versus just something else from a Disney movie so a needle or a spool of some sort. So I went to the fabric store and I was able to find a few things that were on sale that I think should work. So I'm going to have this dark, darker blue as the headpiece. So this blue is a weird, like stretchy fabric. I honestly don't know what you would use this for. Like it's 100% cotton. And then it also like wrinkles really easily. So I can understand why this was on sale. But I think that if I stabilize it a bit and layer it, I think I can more easily put this into some sort of headpiece. And then I bought this, which is a close color to the skirt that I have to try and match that for the top. Um, it's okay if it doesn't totally match because that is sort of what the animation looks like, but I wanted something that basically just blended in. And this is also an odd, sort of fabric it's like a stiff poplin either like a jumpsuit material like a like what you'd wear as a mechanic so this was in the remnants section and it is like a fuzzy material that i think might be for like a sweater or something but i thought that this would be good for a tail i don't actually have just a plain t-shirt pattern that I can use, which I don't think would surprise anybody who sees the way that I dress on a regular basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can adapt a couple of different patterns, which I think should be fine. Um, so I'm going to use the top that is actually this top by Charm Patterns. So I'm going to use the front part of that and the back parts. And this will just help because I want some buttons in the back essentially and so that'll help just get the size and dart placement and i'm going to just change the uh sleeve so that it goes up a little bit further which you can already see on the pattern like slopes down the shoulder for this so i just have to like modify that a little bit and i don't have sleeves generally because i like to show off my tattoo so i'm going to use a sleeve pattern from pajamas that are in time out right now I basically just need an approximation of what the shape is going to be and then I'll modify it based off of that anyways and it's going to be like a bell sleeve so I think it'll be okay. As you might have predicted, fitting a random bodice onto a random set of sleeves was not at all helpful and I'm going to unpick it and redo it. Part of the issue I think is that the bodice is regardless, like the sleeve is too tight, the arm size kind of like too high. It looks a little bit like this shoulder pads going on. I think I'm gonna actually have to unpick what I've done so far. Still try to use the fabric that I have that I've cut out and just lay a different type of pattern on top of it that I think will work a bit better and uh, fix the sleeves and then go from there. Um,
this is much better. The sleeves fit and they flare out a little bit. The darts are fine. I think I could probably sew it up a little bit more because it's puckering a bit, but that's fine. There's nothing in the back yet, which is why this look, looks a little odd. I think like the shoulders and the arm size could have been changed a little bit, but like it's gonna go hopefully under an apron and it's just part of a Halloween costume anyways. So I don't think that it looks that bad as a shirt. So I've finished the main structure of it. Now I'm gonna hem the sleeves and the bottom. I am almost done, but I think I need to do the back. I realized that when I was cutting it out, that when I was adding a couple of inches of allowance on either side of the back for the buttons, I didn't account for the darts. So any excess that I take off from the back is gonna be diagonal, uh, which is gonna be a little bit complicated for what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna need my help. I'm, so I'm gonna need help from my partner when he comes home because I can't reach my own back to be able to figure out the buttons for this. So that was sort of dumb. But a part of me kind of wants to do buttons inspired by like the borrowers or something where it's kind of like cute miscellaneous buttons. I inherited a button jar from my grandmother. So I'm just gonna see if I can pick out some buttons from this. I have less to go off for the go off of for the hat, which I'm gonna start now instead of finishing the shirt. But it doesn't seem to really be based off of anything historical. And it looks a little bit like maybe like a colonial bonnet of some sort, but in reality it mostly just looks like a toque with a little flappy on it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a triangle of fabric and I'm gonna sew up most of it and then I'm gonna leave a little bit and flip it upwards and so that'll give the little like front facing part of it and that will have some interfacing in it so that it's a little bit stronger so we'll see so I'm basing the tail on a tutorial I found online where I'll essentially just be sewing it two ovals together but in this case, I'm going to make it longer than the tutorial because I want it to come out the bottom of the skirt. Never mind, I realized that mouse tails are tiny, so I actually sewed this in half. So it's the next day, I've had a quick shower, and I'm going to head out very quickly to the fabric store to see if I can get the linen for the apron. I am supposed to be working today. I need to do readings for my actual real life studies. Um, but I also know that if I have this errand that I need to do, and if it requires that I like, wash the fabric and stuff it's gonna bother me all day because i'm gonna try and time when i need to leave and how long it's gonna take and it's just gonna eat up a lot of my energy to do that i did see linen in the other store that i went to when i bought the poplin but it was 45 dollars a meter and i think it was on sale so i'm gonna try and see if this other place that's usually a lot cheaper anyways 
if that one is a little bit better and then just go with that got the linen <clears throat> it was 24 dollars a meter which is much more reasonable I am down to the wire on this now. So I didn't film as much about the process that I had last night and this morning, but I did want to update you. So I have started the apron. I cut it out and I started sewing it. I'm using uh, instructions and a pattern um, from someone who I will link down below. They do historical garments. But I discovered that for the most part, um, aprons seem to be relatively simple. I already knew that they were like kind of entry level in terms of, you know, things that you would sew, I think, during home ec and stuff. But I did want to make sure that I was following somebody because I didn't want to use too much brain power for this. So um, for the most part, the apron is basically just show sewing up all of the sides and hems of square pieces of fabric and then attaching them to straps and to a waistband. So I have done the bottom part. I have sewn up the sides and the bottom of this apron. Not a full hem yet because I haven't figured out what length I want. And then I have also gathered it and then sewn it to the waistband. And I made a little bit of an error for like the seam allowance, so it's going to be a little smaller for the waistband than I wanted, but that's fine. And then I'm working on the bib now. This is the bib, so this is the bodice uh, above the apron, and it is just like a triangle of fabric and I'm attaching the straps to it. I'm using dimensions that I got from a 50s pattern, which was a little bit more hourglass than the one that I am following because that one is kind of more based off of the larger bust and silhouette of like the early 1900s, whereas I wanted something that was a little bit flatter and uh, a little bit smaller. But I essentially cut it down to the point where I could sew um, the straps on and then it'll be folded over like that. And so that's what I'm going to do now. And then from there, it's going to end up being like, you know, sew this and then turn over like the seam allowance for the straps, kind of basically sew them together and then just sew them to the skirt portion of the apron. Buckets that I've cut out that I might do after the costume just to save a bit of my sanity. And then I also have the straps which need to be attached as well. I tried to finish the waistband by just top stitching it, which is the way that that often goes. And every time I top stitched it, which was more than once, um, it uh, didn't catch the lining underneath it. It didn't catch the like skirt part of the apron. And so therefore it was fraying all over the place. So I then basted it with like a blue thread um, just to hold it in place to potentially top stitch it again. And then it fell apart in a different area. And I realized that I would have to do what I was trying to avoid, which was do this by hand. So I am currently whip stitching the waistband. So, um, thought that I would get just the minor details done today because today is the party, but apparently I am whip stitching the waistband instead. So just 
wanted to give you an update there. This spool isn't quite to scale, but I thought that this was an interesting addition. This is a spool meant for like cable, I think, that my partner uses as little side tables. So I just wrapped rope around it uh, to basically look like a thread spool. And then a last mi minute addition is the needle, which I think is actually more to scale. And this was a cane that we cut the handle off of. And then my partner 3D printed this shape of the eye of the needle, which attached onto the cane and was then super glued. And then I wrapped tin foil around the whole thing, which has a little pointy end here. I think we could have printed out a pointy end or we could have cut the cane to look more like the end of the needle, but we just didn't have time and that's okay. an experience. I didn't end up filming as much as I had wanted to of different aspects of the costume. First of all, because this was like really my first time doing it from beginning to end for filming this sort of content, but also I just ran out of time to finish some of this. And I've also found, and I don't know if this is because it was cursed or if it was just the way that I sew, but I also find that the faster I try to go, the slower the project itself goes because I seem to rush through things, don't think about what I need to get done, and then the result is having to redo it. So what I like about this is that I think the general silhouette of it makes sense. I really like the hat. It was really easy to do and to make, much easier than I expected. I also quite like the apron. I also quite like the needle. Um, I don't like the end part of the needle, but that was just, again, a time issue. I think if I were to do this costume again, I would just add a piece to the end of the needle. Things I don't like, I didn't anticipate this because in the store, the color seemed slightly different than the skirt but I actually tried to have the top and the bottom of this be slightly different colors, different kind of gradients of blue, and that didn't happen. They ended up looking pretty much exactly the same color, which means it looks a lot more like Alice in Wonderland or something, or even Cinderella, or sort of a vague notion of Cinderella, than it really does the mouse. And that's just because it doesn't look patched worked. The other part, again, also specifically the top is that I messed up the closures in the back. I added a couple of inches to the back to make sure that I could close it because it I wanted back closures instead of front closures, but I didn't account for there being darts. So I ended up with excess material at the top and not at the bottom. And so you can actually see if you look inside of the closures at the back that it's diagonal and because of this I couldn't I didn't have enough overlap to put the buttons on and put buttons hold, holes in because you needed to have buttonholes that were that accounted for the overlap so I had sewn on the buttons instead and I had used snaps um, which were much smaller and are much easier to put on yourself except that what I didn't realize is that snaps around your waist don't make any... I could put a zipper in now, which I think um, if I were to rewear this shirt, I would do instead and maybe repurpose it. Something else I didn't consider is that the tail... Let me, let me change here. That the tail is like fine, but the wire, like the gauge in the wire isn't quite thick enough to be able to hold the table a tail in the position that I'd wanted. I wanted kind of a curve where it could like hold up the skirt a little bit. And I think you actually need a bit of like reinforcement to be able to do that, um, which I didn't think of ahead of time when I wore this to a party. And then, you know, like I just put makeup on just to show whiskers, but I mean like 
that's hardly a mouse, you know. Maybe I could have done some gray or maybe bought another eyeliner that wasn't running out in order to be able to properly do the lines for the whiskers. So all in all, I think I did pretty well. I think it looks how it's supposed to look and um, I think you get the general sense of what I'm trying to be and I think that's good enough. So thank you for watching and next up I think I'm going to be doing some more Halloween stuff. So stay tuned for that.